Parents, in this email, you're going to receive a plethora of information. We want to make sure that you're as informed as possible with the current information that we have from our local, state, and federal agencies. We're trying to adhere to all guidelines, but also stay true to Prosper ISD and what we've all come to know and love. There are a few things that we're going to need from you. First of all, please feel free to read through all of the links that are contained in this email. But we've made it as easy as possible so that you can only click on the information that you need. So if you have an elementary child and you want to read about all things elementary, you, you can select that. If you have a student in special education, you can click on that link and read that information. Please know that at this time, we know and we understand that we have more questions than answers. That is the world we've all come to know that we're living in. And it's frustrating and it's difficult. And we share that same sentiment with you. But please know that we are here to support you through this. And most importantly, we can't wait to see the return of your students in either a virtual or in-person setting. So let's talk a little bit about the virtual setting, because I know that some of you, due to health concerns and conditions, are wanting to opt for that setting. That will be a very scheduled day where students are actually logging on on specific times with other students who have chosen remote, who will be connected with an actual teacher who will be teaching live in the moment. So it will look very different than what it did in our spring semester as we had to very quickly turn education upside down to provide instruction to students. This year it will be a more intense and rigorous curriculum offering because what we know is that the curriculum that is happening in the classroom will also be offered in the virtual setting through one of our highly qualified and skilled educators in Prosper ISD. One of the things that you're going to see that will be a little bit different in the remote setting that I want to make you fully aware of, and it's also contained in this email that you can read, but if we have 30 students who have selected remote and they're in a second grade classroom, they may be taught by a teacher from a totally different campus because we're going to utilize and make sure that we have high quality instruction. But the remote and virtual setting allows us the flexibility to take students and group them. So if you are a student at Spradley Elementary, like we are today, your teacher may not be an actual Spradley teacher. They might be a teacher coming from Cockrell Elementary or at the middle school or high school setting. That same dynamic could occur as well. We want to make sure that we're being good stewards of your taxpayer dollars and making sure that all of our students are still learning at a high level. You will also receive tomorrow a commitment form. This commitment form is a form that we need and we highly encourage all of you to complete it to let us know if you're choosing for your child to be in the remote setting or if you are choosing for them to be in the classroom setting. Know that we're looking at a marking period for you to commit to. Um, because that helps with our staffing, it also helps with the consistency and routine that will be needed through both the virtual and the in-class setting. Please know that the setting we're in and what we've shown you today is only a small sampling of what will be occurring, but we wanted to take you on a journey so that you could visualize and really make an educated and informed decision on the commitment form that you will receive tomorrow. Parents also, if you've not taken the time to register your student, it is highly, highly critical to the work that we do as we're working through staffing to ensure that we have enough staff and personnel ready to greet your children either in a virtual setting or in an in-class setting. The registration does not commit you that you will have to come, but it, it allows us to have accurate numbers to know exactly who we need to have in place as a strong, competent, and highly qualified staff. I want to thank you for your patience, your understanding, and your support. That is one of the things in my 14 years of Prosper ISD that I have come to love and appreciate about this community. So I want to thank you for everything that you are doing, because the one thing that we know is that we are Prosper and we are one. The information that we'll provide today is spans over an elementary, middle school, and high school setting. But today we're going to show you specifically the measures that we're going to put in place for safety for your students on August 12th. So let's go ahead and make our way out to the car line to see how things might look different. So parents, here we are in the Spradley car line and Mrs. Scoggin is here welcoming the students. The modifications and adjustments that you will see is the fact that the staff and the principal will not be opening the car.
car dealers and touching surfaces, but they will be out in the car line greeting our children just like we have come to love and appreciate and prosper ISD. We were very fortunate that our PISD school board has supported the initiative of having a police officer on every single one of our PISD campuses. As you can see, uh, Chief Vessels is to my left and he's at the door to greet the students. Here we are in the entry of the building. One thing that you're going to notice is that upon arrival and dismissal times, our doors will be propped but monitored safely by our police officers and our staff members so that our students can enter and exit the building safely. I know that that's a little bit of a difference, but we want to make sure that we're ensuring safety for our students by not touching multiple surfaces as they're entering and exiting the building. To my left, you'll see our receptionist. This is the same as it has been with them behind the glass to sign you in and sign you out. Some differences that you're going to see is that visitors are only going to enter the building if they are essential. So that would be scheduled meetings by a principal, it would be dropping off of lunch, which may be on the outside of the building, but we'll make sure that those items get to your students. One change that you're going to see in the event that you need to pick your child up for an appointment is the fact that we will have one of our staff members or an officer escort your child to the car outside of the building. We're going to ask that you have your driver's license with you so that we can ensure safety and make sure that we're allowing that student to go with the right adult. You'll do this process by calling into the front office so that the receptionist can go ahead and get the student ready to come down and be ready to exit the building safely with an adult. Prosper ISD has taken additional measures to ensure that all of our buildings are disinfected and cleaned at the beginning of the day, during the day, and then following the school day. Safety is of the utmost importance for our students and our staff in our district. Our teachers and staff in Prosper ISD will be greeting our students just as they have always done, making sure that our students' social, emotional, health, and well-being is taken care of from the very beginning of the day. So now that we're in the instructional setting, I have Ellie with us today and she's showing the proper technique to wipe down surfaces to ensure the safety of our students within the instructional setting. As you can see, the desks are spaced six feet apart and we'll make sure that we are teaching the proper measures to our students that are coming into our actual classrooms to understand all of the social distancing rules to keep them safe. As we've always done in Prosper ISD, we have a high commitment to academic excellence. One of the main things that we'll need to do since the learning that um, occurred remotely last spring is to ensure that we're assessing our students to find out exactly where they are so that we can meet their academic needs of what they're walking in the door with as they return to school. As you can see, our teacher is behind a plexiglass shield and a mask, and she would be working with a singular student or potentially a small group of students that would be distant six feet apart.